Well, hello, everybody. It's wonderful to have you with us. I pray wherever you are that you know that God is right there where you are. Well, we are coming towards the end of this series, experiencing the power of the Holy Spirit. A few days to go yet, but it's coming to the end. And then I'm going to go on because I'm not finished with the Holy Spirit. We're going to go on and talk specifically about the fruits of the Holy Spirit. What's fruit? Fruit is a sign of health. Fruit is an identifier. It tells you what, what, uh, what something is. But fruit is also the source of multiplication and how it goes on. I think this series on the fruits of the Holy Spirit will really bless us and help us as we go more deeply in our walk with God in prayer. Well, I'm going to go to the scriptures right now as we continue in our series, Experiencing the Power of the Holy Spirit. If you have a Bible, you can go with me to John chapter 14, verse, uh, verse 6. Uh, it's on page 1010, if you have my Bible that you're using. And, and I'm going to ask Scott, Scott, who edits this. Scott, if you can put up one scripture, one scripture and just leave it there until I've done the second scripture, because I want to compare the two. It says in John chapter 14, verse 6, Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus said, I'm the way and the truth and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. If you could leave that on the screen, have a look at this. And let's just drop down to verse 16. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate. The word advocate you could replace with the word helper, to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth, the Holy Spirit, whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you and he will be in you. Now, in that very first scripture, Scott, can you circle, I am the way and the truth. Can you circle the truth? Can you circle the truth? Let's have a look at the second scripture now. And I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth, the spirit of truth. What Jesus is talking to the apostles and he said, I'm going. And he said, I've been with you. I've been your advocate. I've been your helper here on earth, but I'm going. And, and the father and I, the father and son, because proceeds, the Holy Spirit proceeds from the father and the son. And so what's the, the, the Holy Spirit going to bring? The Holy Spirit is going to bring the truth. In other words, the Holy Spirit is going to bring me. The Holy Spirit is going to, is going to remind you as we read in another place, all that I have said. So in other words, the spirit of truth is Jesus. The Holy Spirit brings Jesus in a sense and opens us to the power of Jesus. Do you see? Circle the word truth there in that second scripture. And the spirit of truth, the spirit of truth. And Jesus has just said, I am the way and the truth. So the Holy Spirit is going to bring the spirit of Jesus to us in our life. And it goes on and it says this, you know, him because he abides with you and he will be in you, Jesus says. You know uh, he abides with you and he will be in you. Um, so even though the world cannot see uh, the Holy Spirit at life, we, you will know it because the Holy Spirit will be resident in you. Have a, have a look at this. Let's jump to 1 Corinthians chapter 6. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6, it says this. Um, or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit? within you, which you have from God, and that you are not your own. And if you go to the, uh, chapter 3, verse 16, it says, Do you not know that you are God's temple and God's spirit dwells in you? In what, what, what the writers are all saying to us is the spirit that is, comes from the Father and the Son, the spirit that will reveal truth to us, and who is the truth? Jesus to us, will reside within us. And then we look at that verse again in John chapter 14, verse 17. It says, you know him because he abides with you and he will be in you. So what does all of that mean? Is that the spirit of God will reside within us. And, and it will be evident to us as we open our lives more deeply to God, as we surrender our life to the power of the Holy Spirit, as we surrender our life to the, to the Lordship of Jesus, as we surrender our lives to the love of the Father. And it's the Spirit that brings us, the faith in, it, it comes from the Father and the Son, revealing, showing, guiding, leading in our life. And so, and so the Spirit, and so the Holy Spirit is at work within us and it's constantly at work and we abide in the Holy Spirit. And all of that's good theory, but what does it mean? It means that, that as we walk our Christian life, as we become committed more deeply 
where we are, the Holy Spirit is constantly at work within because the Holy Spirit takes up residence within us when we yield our life, we give our life to Jesus and we invite Jesus to come more deeply into our life. Now, those of us who've been baptised, we know that we know that the Holy Spirit enters to us when we're born again through water and the Spirit. We know as Catholic people, we believe at the Sacrament of Confirmation, other denominations do it differently, that we receive and are confirmed more deeply with the power of the Holy Spirit in our life. The Spirit is within us. And what we need to do as we walk with Christ is we surrender more deeply to Christ, to Jesus. As we surrender more deeply to the Holy Spirit, we allow the Holy Spirit, we, we allow the Holy Spirit to rise in us as we sensitize and learn the faculties of listening, of seeing with our heart and with our spirit. And all of that takes place in prayer. So the Holy Spirit is within us. The Holy Spirit brings truth to us, Jesus, who is the way, the truth, and the life. The Holy Spirit resides within us. And this Holy Spirit is constantly at work within us as we cooperate with the Holy Spirit to lead us in a way where we begin to see, as the scriptures say elsewhere, we begin to see a new kingdom in our life. And we begin to live and to see and to understand and to experience God more deeply. That's what the power of the Holy Spirit is. It gives us power to live beyond our ability. Loving Father, we thank you today that the Holy Spirit takes up residence within us, just doesn't want to be within us silently, but wants us to abide with the Spirit within, that we become more sensitive to, we become have greater knowledge of in our own life. Come Lord God right now in the name of Jesus, through the power of the Holy Spirit, and help us to reveal, to yield, and, and to say our yes more deeply to the Holy Spirit, that the Holy Spirit would be revealed in us. And as we reveal our true nature, the Holy Spirit would be seen at work in power in our life. And Father, we make this prayer in the name of Jesus through the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you all, everybody. I know there's a lot there. Go back and listen to it again. Read those four scriptures. They're fascinating. Uh, And I pray that it will bless you. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. And don't forget, wherever you are, God is never far from you.